And uh, today's presenter will be Dan Belisario from ChemLink. And uh, we have the absolute pleasure to have him here. So without any further ado, Dan, take it away. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out on a three o'clock on a Friday. So I greatly appreciate you taking the time. At the end, we'll all convene to the bar and I'm buying. So oh, yeah. now you a little humor there. Yeah, Not well, much. The uh, Can everyone see my screen? Not a roofer, not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, just making sure. So today um, we're going to talk a little bit about ChemLink, the products we manufacture, where they fit in the HVAC market and the refrigeration market as well, and we'll go from there. It's a little slide here. We like to call it ChemLink in numbers. Been around since 1990. Our plant is out in Schoolcraft, Michigan, which is in the southwest corner. Two hours east is Detroit, two hours west if you go around the bottom of the lake and to the bottom left-hand corner of the lake is Chicago. So we're kind of right dead smack in the middle between Chicago and Detroit at the bottom of the state. We have an R&D department out there to develop in all the sealants that we've manufactured over the years. Uh, we have a training center. And today we have more than 125 employees working at our plant and the office throughout the United States. So that's us in numbers. Who are we? We are a, hold on, what did I just click on there? Who are we? Construction and maintenance materials manufacturer. We're a big sealant and adhesive manufacturer. We've been doing, again, we've been doing this since 1990. Um, cut our teeth with, in the roofing world, replacing pitch pockets with what we call curbs. So, and we've moved from the roofing world into a variety of other industries or markets, if you will. We're involved in the siding market. We make a full line of colored sealants um, that match all the various siding colors that are out there. Window manufacturers' colors, is, we make almost every color underneath the rainbow. We work in the window and door industry again. We get used in a variety of applications there. In the installation end of it, if you got a window with a nailing fin, they'll use our product behind the nailing fin. They'll use us on the front side when they're, if, if you're putting in a J channel, they'll, they'll um, seal the J channel to the window to prevent air and moisture from getting behind it and so forth. So we work with the window and door guys. Solar, gigantic partner to Chemlink and, and in um in the solar world, chemlink's almost like a verb. Go out there and chemlink it. So you can kind of see the picture down here. We're we're very involved in the solar industry, much like we're gonna be involved with the with the HVAC world, the solar world uses us for penetrations on the roof. Heavily involved in the waterproofing, we go all the way down below we offer below grade waterproofing products. Uh you guys know a little bit about us just getting involved in the HVAC refrigeration market. The big reason we've gotten involved there is the roofing market has actually asked us to get involved with the mechanical contractors. Why? The big reason is the HVAC contractor and mechanical contractor will go out there, do their job, right, and set the equipment, get the line sets in and so forth, and then go down. And when they're done, they go down to the building owner and say, hey, Call your roofer in. We're done. And then the building owner calls the roofer, and the roofer says, oh, I'm two to three weeks out. And the building owner goes, oh, no. It's going to rain like crazy for the next two weeks. What do I do now? So what's he do? He calls the mechanical contractor back. Hey, roofer can't get out of here for two to three weeks. You need to do something. So what's the mechanical do? He runs out to the local distribution, grabs whatever silicone they have in the tube, and goes out there and lathers silicone all over it and makes it watertight. And when the roofer shows up two, three weeks later, there's silicone all over the place. And he's like, oh, nothing sticks to silicone. I got to cut all this stuff out. And then he's got to re-weld or uh, retape in membrane and then, and then do all his flashing he needs to do for the equipment and the line sets. So they came to us saying, if you could, Try to start getting mechanical contractors to start using M1 because then all our stuff will stick to M1. So they kind of started pushing us into the mechanical world. So funny little story there. Roofers pushing us that way. but And that led to us 
not only showing them one, but obviously selling e-curbs and having mechanical contractors do it themselves. We're involved in the pool and spa world. They use us around coping joints, underwater pool repair, tile repair, pool houses, uh, deck joints, things along those lines. One that's not on here yet that we're growing more and more into is the RV world. Why? Because, number one, you have two dissimilar materials. You have either aluminum or fiberglass coming up the side of that that side of that RV meeting a variety of different materials on the roof. It's usually a TPO or an EPDM roof that they put up there. So you have two different dissimilar materials, then you have different expansion and traction rates, and then you also have hybrid vibration. You have you have wind loads on it and so forth that's going down the road. So their seams tend to break down and they get leaks. And our products have become a good little sealant for them in terms of we have a lot of joint movement. We'll handle the expansion contraction, the different temperatures. We'll handle the, the high wind speeds because we have great adhesion. So all those little things make us do well in the RV end of it. So another market. So our markets are growing every day. The core technology to Chemlink is our polyether. Polyether is a combination of silicone and polyurethane. So I always kind of like to say we take the best of both worlds, combine them into one product. So we are a hybrid of, of silicone and polyurethane, and we get rid of the negatives. So what's great about polyurethane is, number one, it sticks to almost everything. Two, it's a great adhesion. Here's a little um, time to use your thumbs up. Anybody ever use Gorilla Glue? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so Gorilla Glue is, um, is a polyurethane product, and we know how well Gorilla Glue sticks to everything. So everything Gorilla Glue will work on, the Kemlink polyether technology will work as well. Yeah. So pretty much sticks to everything. What's that? Service advisor, please. Okay. So, hey, George, can you mute your microphone if you don't mind, please? Thank you. Um, the, so the, um, anyway, back to polyurethane. Sticks to everything, great adhesive, moisture cure, Paintable, big negatives to polyurethane. Number one, loaded in isocyanates and carcinogens. So every time you lick your finger to tool to work, you are poisoning yourself. Uh, two, it doesn't do well in sunlight. It turns colors in the sunlight. Light colors yellow out, dark colors fade. Three, it gets rock hard. It's an adhesive. Remember that. So to make it not be an adhesive, they need to put plasticizers in. When you introduce plasticizers, you introduce solvents. When you introduce solvents, the solvents flash out of the material and cause the material to shrink. When you have shrinkage, you get surface cracking, and you also get bomb failure. Once that, once that product shrinks and you start to get building movement, lots of times you'll have bomb failure. So we kind of get rid of those negatives. We keep the stick to everything, moisture cure, paintability, and adhesive properties of polyurethane and combine that with silicone. What's great about silicone? It's flexible. It's a rubber. It, it's got great UV retention. You could take this green color right here, make it out of silicone, and stick it out in the sunlight for 10 years and come back 10 years from now, it'll still be that nice green color. It won't fade. Silicone is the only product I know that's not affected by UV. So great UV retention, great flexibility. It's also got great what I call workability. You can go back to tooling your work. You know, another time I'm going to ask you to throw out a thumbs up. Everybody familiar with the term tooling when you go out and shape your sealants? When you put it in a corner, you can take your finger down there and so forth. Um, thank you. So it tools really nicely silicone. Last but not least about silicone is it's got high temperature applications. So temp you know, lots of times when you see furnace glues and high temperature products, right, they're silicones. So, um, so we keep all, almost all of those, um, the big, I'm sorry, I didn't talk about the negatives of silicone. The big negatives of silicone. One is um, some of them are used with acetoxy, which is a curing agent, and they're corrosive to metals, and it smells like vinegar, and it ha 
causes what they call here haps or hazardous air pollutants. Um, the other problem with silicone is it gets dirty quickly. There's a negative ion in it. When there's a negative ion, dirt and dirt out in nature is a positive ion. They naturally attract to each other like a magnet with metal shaving. So they just naturally bond to each other. So when you put silicone out in the marketplace, it will get dirty over time due to the negative ion with it. And last but not least, you can't paint or coat silicone. So we get rid of the negative ion, get rid of the non-paintability, non-coatability, and get rid of the acetoxy. And we keep the, we keep the flexibility, the workability or the toolability of silicone, as well as the UV stability of silicone. And combine that with the stick to everything, moisture cure, paintable, and adhesive properties of polyurethane, and you have what we call polyether. So the benefits of polyether, number one, it's 100% solids. There are extremely low VOCs in our products. So that means we do not shrink. What you put there will be there today, tomorrow, 10 days from now, 10 months from now, 10 years from now. When we get in talking about our curbs, we offer 10 and 20 year warranties on our curbs. Why? Because we're 100% solids. We don't shrink. It will not break down. So 100% solids, low VOCs. The benefit of low VOCs is there's no smell to our product. So you can use my product inside, outside, or in a confined space. You don't have to worry about VOCs contaminating the air around it. The other nice thing about it is if you are on a rooftop and you are setting equipment and you're near a ventilation intake area and you use in something that's hazardous and it gets into the ventilation system now you got a building owner on the roof going what are you doing i got people complaining they got headaches they want to go home and you can talk to roofers about having hazardous air products get into a ventilation system some of these guys have seen emergency rooms come out and set up in the in the parking lot and you should hear the horror stories You'll never get that with us because we don't have any VOCs in our product. No isocyanates, no cancer-causing ingredients. We pass California Proposition 65. Um, we pretty much stick to everything. That's the polyurethane side of it. We have great color retention. That's the great. That's the silicone side of it. We tool fantastically. Again, the silicone side of it. Um, another nice feature about us being a moisture cure product is we work on wet damp and underwater surfaces. We get used all the time for emergency roof repairs um, with roofers. It's raining out. They take our, you're going up on the roof, you don't know what you're going to be dealing with. You could have a variety of different products. Well, guess what? Polyether pretty much sticks to everything. It works on damp, wet, and underwater surfaces. Great product to take up on the roof with you when you're going on an emergency roof call. Um, it'll, and most importantly, you'll gun it. It'll grab It'll adhere, it'll cure, and most importantly, it'll stop the water when you're doing those emergency roof repairs. Um, so a lot of benefits to this hybrid sealant that we call polyether. Um, another nice little one, you're not going to run into this one as much, no possibility of outgassing. That's a lot of times when you're using it with masonry because masonry absorbs moisture, and then the moistures react with the isocyanates, and the isocyanates form carbon dioxide, and then you get all this bubbling. We have plastic cartridges, so if you should leave it in your truck overnight and it rains, or you leave it on the job site overnight and it rains and your cardboard tubes get wet, guess what? Those things are in the dumpster. Plastic cartridges, that problem is eliminated. No more throwing tubes away. The other nice thing that we do is being 100% solid is we do not freeze. It could be negative 40 degrees out in North Dakota. You could leave our product out in, in that weather Come in the next day, cut a hole in it, poke a hole in the foil seal, stick it in your gun, and it will gun. It does not freeze. So what's nice is you can leave it out in your warehouses for your distributors, and you can also um, leave it in your trucks and, and not worry about things along those lines. So now kind of taking this polyether technology, where does it fit in with the HVAC guys? Well, Part of the things that we do is we make what, as you can see here, roofers would call this a pitch pocket. We call it a curb. Here's another picture of one here. 
So all that polyether being 100% solids, right? None of this stuff is going to shrink. So what you put there, again, will be there today, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And speaking of 20 years, up to a 20-year warranty with our curves at no charge. Isn't that wonderful to be go to, able to go to your building owner and say, hey, Mr. Building Owner, when I put a hole in your roof, I'm going to put this E-curve in its place, and I'm going to give you a warranty for each one of those for 10, 15, or 20 years, and then it's up to the mechanical contractor to send the warranty card in, but that curve will be guaranteed for that amount of time. So 100% solids, doesn't no solvents in it. Don't worry about getting into a, a ventilation system again. Really nice application temperatures and we can all we can go below 40 we can go all the way down to as cold as you can take it i just said minus 40 in north dakota if you want to go out and work in minus 40 degree weather you can take chemlink with you i will give you the the what you need to do when it's below 32 just to make sure that there's no frost or ice because remember earlier i said we stick to everything well one of the things we stick to is frost and ice how do you like that one? Not many things stick to that. Polyether does. And the, so we just have to make sure that there's no sheen of ice when you're putting a curb down. And we'll cover that in one of the last slides, what you need to do there to make sure. So when it's below 32, let's just treat that area with some denatured alcohol and then apply our curbs and we'll be in good shape. No flasher or mechanical attachments. We don't believe in putting holes in the roof. We already put a hole in the roof for the penetration. Let's not add any by putting holes in the in the curbs that we have to apply. So, so no flasher or mechanical attachment. I kind of mentioned this earlier. We work on damp surfaces. So have at it. You come out to the job site in the morning and it's all wet from dew or rain it rained earlier in the evening or that night. Um, have at it. That damp, that damp surface is just going to help us cure faster. I always tell people, you want us to cure faster? Mist the area with water. We can fit any size or shape penetration that you can possibly come up with. So from something tight up against a wall to a gigantic duct, the largest one we have is 1,200 feet long. I don't know how wide it was, but I wish I sold that job, but I didn't, so... What are you going to do? Reduces labor cost. That's awesome, right? Now you don't have to pay a sub for a roofer to come out, or you don't have to have your guy. You know, your guy's going to go do it. He's not really sure what the heck to do. He's just looping a bunch of stuff in there, crossing his fingers and hoping it works. With our product, these things install in a matter of minutes, and they're easy. You're going to see that in a few seconds. So ease of installation. Also, for all our mechanical um, contractors that are in the audience, we are available for training. We'll be glad to come to your shop, show you how to do all this, and go from there. Last but not le least, they come in boxes. They store easily in your trucks. They're easy to carry up on the roof, and they're impervious to ice, corrosion, UV, and ponding water. Quick little slide here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. The difference between a caulk and a sealant. The biggest difference is, is caulks tend to be water-based. They have limited movement. The max they can move up to is a 12.5%. So if you kind of put that in layman's terms, if you had a one-inch gap, that gap could expand one-sixteenth of an inch and contract one-sixteenth of an inch. Where sealants, they start at 25% and go up to 100%. So if you had a sealant that moved 50%, we use the M1. That one moves 35%. So M1 will, on that same one inch, will expand out to an inch and three-eighths and contract to five-eighths of an inch, much greater than the largest one they have hit one here, here at one-sixteenth of an inch. So much greater movement, much longer show, uh, life expectancy out in the field. You put a water-based caulk outside, you won't get three years out of it. Between the expansion contraction and the cold weathers and the warm days, you're lucky to get a year before that thing all begins to crack out. It needs to be inside, needs to be controlled. It doesn't have great UV resistance. It doesn't handle expansion contraction all that well. And remember, it doesn't move all that great. That's why it doesn't handle expansion contraction. Then being water-based, it's going to shrink quite a bit. So between the shrinkage, the limited movement, you're lucky to get three to five out of it. Where sealants, you have 
a rather large movement. We make products that expand 100%. Um, by that, go back to my one-inch example earlier, that thing will, if you had that one-inch gap, that one-inch gap at 100% will expand out to two inches and you track back down to 50%. So depending on the sealant that you're using, because there's some sealants that have 0% shrinkage like ChemLink, and there's others out there. I don't know. Has anybody ever heard of Lexel? Thumbs up, clapping, anything? All right, well, Lexel is a popular product that you'll see in plumbing wholesalers. Loaded in solvents, even greater than 35% there, 40%. So you're, what you put down will shrink 40%. So there are some sealants out there that are solvent-based that have high, uh, that have high um, shrinkage factors. And you'll see a lot of them in the roofing world. So Lexel's one, OSI's quad's another, Solar Seal, GSL 2300, to name a few manufacturers that use solvents um, that are greater than 30% in their tubes. Shelf life, we're expected to let one plus years, acrylics, six to a year, adhesion application, spare to go with the acrylics. And then depending on the sealant, you're gonna have good adhesion to excellent adhesion. And the M1 falls on the excellent side of it. So speaking of M1, there she blows. Um, M1 is a universal sealant and adhesive. It's got 390 pounds per lineal inch. That's per lineal inch of shear strength. So you need 400 pounds pushing one way and 400 pounds pushing the other way per lineal inch to get that product to pull off. All right, that's a lot of, that's a lot of shear strength. M1 is considered a structural adhesive based on these numbers right here. But at the same time, it's got great elongation and it's got great joint movement. So it's hard to get an adhesive with these types of move, this ability to move and at that same time have that type of adhesion. Because lots of times when you adhere something, you create a monolithic bond and you don't want those two pieces to move. And we do that monolithic bond, but we also have the ability to move without breaking down. Again, 100% solid. We're gun great, so caulk away with it in a regular caulk gun. No special tools needed. It's non-slump, non-sag. That means if you use it vertically, which you can use Kimling vertically. Um, if I was to gun it on this screen right here and stop it right here above the non-sag, non-slump section here, you go back, come back 24 hours, and it's still sitting right there. It stops where you put it to. So there's a lot of viscal qual qualities to it. You can use it overhead. It's not going to fall off and land on the ground be underneath it. 20-minute skin over. That's a really nice feature. The benefit of a 20-minute skin over is you stop dirt pickup. So when you do that, when you walk that roof with the building owner at the end, guess what? Your, your caulk looks really good because it skinned over and dirt was no longer sticking to it. We talked about the outgassing with damp surfaces. Here's your service temperature, right? Before I was showing you application temp temperatures, here's your service temperature, minus 40 degrees. So, so for all you out there that do refrigeration work, we can work with you on the refrigeration side. And then we go up to 200 degrees. Now, if you need to go greater to 200 degrees, you got a B-Vent or something hot along those lines, we have a product that'll take you to 400 degrees, and I'll cover that in a later slide. If you ever need to paint these, you can. They're paintable within, within 24 hours. Again, I mentioned this earlier. We come in plastic um, cartridges. We also have five-ounce squeeze tubes. And not on here, on here, and I don't think they'll be big in the HVAC world, but we have sausages. So I'm going to run a little video here for you that we showing you how M1 works underwater. It takes about a minute. So you're going to miss the mu wonderful music on here. So what we've done here is built a, for lack of a better term, a box. It's got three sides of um, cardboard, I'm sorry, of plywood, a bottom of plywood, and a glass front. So you can see what he's doing. He's got water pouring out, and water is running out the bottom down here. And as this water is coming in, he is sealing all the joints in this box. And he is going to tool this underwater so it's flexible while, while it's raining. Okay, you can, you can tool it, you can manipulate it, you can spread it, okay, and it'll bond, it'll grab, and all this moisture that's coming into it is just going to help it cure faster. 
So as you can see, he's finishing up the final section here. He's got to come up the top right there. And he's got all four corners, and there's my aquarium. And just like that, it'll work on a roof, but it'll keep the water out in that particular case instead of in in this particular application. So there's the M1 working in a wet application. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, E-curbs and chem curbs. Sister products, one right here is the E curb, the one below it is the chem curb. The big difference is the E curbs interlock right here. The chem curbs need to be adhered together. These are made out of reinforced nylon. These are made out of cast polyester. The very first, this was our original product that we started manufacturing back in 1990. They were made out of cast concrete. And some of them early ones are still out there. And some of them early ones also. Uh, being concrete gave way over time and nowadays there's just this polyether hockey puck sitting there and it's still watertight so pretty impressive but today they're made out of cast polyester we don't promote the chem curves into the HVAC market as much why because they come in gray only the e curves come in white the chem curves only have them come in five inch and seven inch and they have six inch and 12 inch extensions where the e curves come with a three inch extension a diameter they come with a four inch round a five inch round a six inch round a nine inch round plus a three and a half inch by four and a half inch rectangle and then we make extensions which i will show you in a, in a future slide that, that are three inches and eight inches long much better than six and twelve because the real money in this is the filler that you put in this and the tighter we can make this to your penetration the better off we are we'll, we'll need less one part so that's what I like about E-curbs. The extensions make it much more easier to stay tight to the penetration. You have them in gray and white, so depending on your roof surface, you can you have a better color match. And three, you have all those different sizes. And four, these are actually a little more economical to buy than the chem curbs. So all both of them, two inches high. They both have a two-inch flange. Um, again, being polyether and using, we use M1 to put this down with, okay? Remember I was talking earlier about M1 being a structural adhesive? Well, that M1 with 390 pounds per lineal inch gives you quite a bit of bite. These are not easy things to get off the roof once you have them on there. So, again, it can be applied to damp surface. It rained. It's got to do on the roof. Have at it. Again, no mechanical attachments required. Great service temperature. The one part is... The other portion of the system, we have the, the curb, we have the M1, and we have our pourable sealer. That Those are the three components you need to build a curb on a low slope roof. And then we make a product called Duralink that we can use in place of the pourable sealer, or we could use M1 to fill up the curbs, and we're going vertically with these. And you can go vertical. All right, here's another little video I'm going to show. Quick little one minute. Start by applying M1 Universal Adhesive and Sealant to the base of the post. Cover the outside of the base and bolts. Apply product three inches up the post and completely cover the base. Next, apply three lines of the M1 to the underside of the E-curve. Place the first side down and press down firmly until sealant extrudes out. Place the second piece to complete the circle, ensuring the two halves are locked together. Apply M1 around the outside of the E-curve and spread the sealant for a smooth surface. Fill the remaining space with one part sealant. E curbs dry in place and provide durable, watertight mounts. And that's it. Your curb installation is complete. Visit our website or contact us today to learn more. Sorry about that. It started earlier than I was expecting it to. But um, real quick, you just saw a quick little installation of our product. It, it's four steps one, seal. The gap between, oh, well, actually, I'll just get the next screen. This is step one, okay? There's a gap here. This is mod, This is granulated SBS mod bit roofing, asphalt roof system with granulations on top. Not many things adhere to a granulated surface. M1 does. Polyether does, okay? So we take the M1, and there's a gap right here where the penetration meets the roof deck. 
and we seal that void. So later, when we pour that pourable sealer, which you just saw at the last step in that little video right there, it doesn't run into the room below it. Plus, what's nice is that's our last line of defense if water should get through the rest of the curb. So technically, if I walked away from this right now and just left it like it is, it's watertight. So anyway, first thing we want to do is seal that gap. The second thing we want to do is we want to bring it three inches up off the roof deck. And the reason we bring it up three inches off the roof deck is our curbs are two inches high. And we're going to fill our curbs with pourable sealer. And we want to make sure we go past the curb for that final inch to um, – to make sure that the M1 and the one power pours, pourable sealer get the bond that we want. And the reason we put this on here is this is a nice, clean, galvanized strut coming out of this roof in this picture. But we as a manufacturer don't always know if we're going to have a nice, clean piece of galvanized strut or a clean piece of copper or a clean piece of PVC. It could be a rusty old gas line or a piece of conduit with a bunch of roof muck. So we as a manufacturer have no idea what's coming through that roof. We know the M1 pretty much adheres to everything. Um, prep your penetration with the M1, and then when we pour our pourable seal, we will definitely get the bond that we're looking for. And at the very end, I'll come off the screen, and I'll show you that tenacious bond that that gives us. So that's step one. Prep it three inches up off the roof deck on the penetration and seal that void between the roof deck and the penetration. Step two, we saw this in the video, three beads across the bottom right here, then flip it over. Now, this guy's got this one put together because it's, it's a galvanized strut and it's easy to slide over the top. But if this strut was coming up and it was going into a piece of equipment or a wall or whatever, we have the two pieces that we can piece around it and, and interlock. So nice along those lines, flip it over, set it in place, and now – you're going to work it down into the roof. You just want to kind of spread those beads out that you just had on the, on the bottom side of that. So work that down. Then we're going to put a bead around the outside here and then a bead across the little flip joint. And last but not least, fill it with pourable sealer. Once you fill it, so this one, this guy's not using a nozzle, but we do give nozzles for you because sometimes it's tight in here and the nozzle's nice for not dripping stuff all over the place. So this is self-leveling. Pour it in, fill it to the top. When you're done, flip your bag back over, squeeze the air out of the top of it, put the lid on it and store it upside down and save that bag for the next job. This bag is reusable until it's empty. Um, so what I, what I like about this little picture right here is we just built a fort. Our first line of defense is this bead of sealant that we put on the outside. Water's got to get through that to get through this penetration and into the roof, or I should say into the building. Our second line of defense were the three beads we put right underneath the flange on the Z-curb, okay? So now water's got to get by here. Now it's got to get by the three flanges, or the three beads, sorry, underneath the flange. And last but not least, our third line of defense is the pourable sealer that we put up here. So now water's got to get through here, through the first line, through the second line, and now past the third line. And last but not least, we sealed this originally with the M1 back in slide one. That's my final line of defense. So I just built a fort around that whole final line of defense to protect Mother Nature from getting into there. And that is why... We offer 10 and 20 year warranties on these and anybody can install these. If I can install these guys, the worst guy on your team can do this. So there's a little kind of snapshot of a bunch of different curves. You can see them. We have them in white. We got them in gray. There's a nine, a six, a three, a four. I don't see a five in there. There's my three and a half by four and a half inch one. That's my rectangle. There's a three and a half by four and a half inch with an extension in it. There's, I'm going to call that a four-inch curb. Yeah, you know what? I think that's my five-inch curb right there. That's my five-inch curb with an eight-inch extension in it. So a full gamut, you can, make, you can mix and match these things. We make corners right here, and I'll show you at the end when I'm pulling on my curb earlier to show you the tenacious bond that we have between the one part and the M1 and the curbs. I'll show you a quick little mock-up of I made I made a curb to fit a five by 10 uh, penetration sitting here on my floor, but little, uh, 
So I'll come back to that in a, in a little bit at the end. Here's our one part pourable sealer. This is all that stuff. I'm going to repeat it all over again. 20 minute skin over. Great UV stability. Works on damp surfaces. It doesn't shrink. 100% solid. Self leveling. Minus 40 to 200. I've said all this stuff over because it's all polyether. This is made out of polyether. Only difference between this one and M1 is this one's more of a self-leveling product, much more viscous, obviously. And then it's designed to be used and fill curbs. We make a low v VOC TPO primer, and we also have EPDM on here because today's EPDM it's always nice to prime EPDM. You don't have to, but when you can, it's nice. Older EPDM and newer EPDM are different. And the newer ones are a little bit harder to stick to. So when you can prime it with EP, the EPDM TPO primer, do so. But TPO, anytime you walk up onto a roof that's white, it needs to be primed. There's two types of white roofing membranes out there. One's PVC, the other one's TPO. You as a mechanical contractor have no idea whether it's TPO or PVC. I have a hard time telling, it, telling what it is. If it's new, PVC smells like a shower curtain, so that's easy. If it's wet, TPO is slipperier than a skating rink, right? So that's kind of easy. And the third thing is, is, is that there's a scrim in it. It looks like a, a weaved... Um, a polyester weave to it, and that scrim will surface faster on a TPO. You won't see that scrim in a PVC. So if you're up on an older TPO roof, you will see that scrim tend kind of surface on it because the top of it wears out faster. So if you don't can't tell that way, and I'm not expecting you to be able to tell that way, if you have a white roof membrane, prime it. Simple as that. And all our white kits, our E-curb e white kits, the primer is in there. So all you got to do is break out the primer, get a little chip brush, spread it out where you're putting your curb down. It dries in like a minute, if that. And then apply your curb. Do all those steps we just looked at. Here's a custom e Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Um, here's a custom e-curb. He obviously cleaned this little roof right here because this EPDM roof over here is all oxidized, and you can see where it's black here. So he's cleaned it. Um, he's making sure he's got one-inch space between the edge of his penetration and the, the inside part of his curb. Um, and then from there, he, he's now sealing the void between his EPDM and, and his penetration. He's got this H-beam coming through, and he's got two pieces of conduit coming through. So he's sealing his void. He's bringing it three inches up off the roof deck. So he's got it all prepped along those lines. Now he's got his cur He put his three beads down already, right? He's got his curb down. Now he's putting the bead on the outside. So he's got that part done. He did it across the slip joints. And now he's pouring his portable sealer in there. And there you are. He is done. That fast, that quick, that easy. The only difference between this one and one without the extension is there is no differences. It's just bigger. That's all. Might require a little bit extra step here with the 8-inch extension, but easy enough to do. I was kind of talking a little while back about high temperature applications. We switched from a polyether to a product that we manufacture called Duracell. Duracell is a neutral cure silicone. It has high temperature applications. Its service temperature goes to 400 degrees, and it's even got a colder application of minus 80. So when we have those B vents and those higher temperatures, we're going to switch the M1 out for our door sill product right here, and we're going to switch our one-part pourable sealer out for the next slide, which will be called door sill self-leveling. And again, neutral cure silicon. There is no smell to this one. It doesn't promote corrosion to the metal because it's an oxime cure. It needs atmospheric air blowing over it. The skin's over in about 10 minutes. Um, Non-slump again, just like earlier, 100% solids. It will not shrink. So all those benefits that we've kind of been talking. This one's got a little bit greater joint movement than, than M1 does. M1's 35%. This one's 50 
So go back to my one inch statement earlier, that one inch gap that I was talking about, that one inch gap now can go out to an inch and a half, and contract to a half an inch, and Duracell will stay with it that whole time. So again, packaged in plastic cartridges, so you don't have to worry about it breaking down. Again, adheres to a variety of dissimilar materials, much like polyether was doing earlier. So this thing's been formulated especially for us. Here's the high temp side of it, or I should say the self-leveling high temp side of it, minus 80 again, no corrosion, all those things I just said about door sill applied to door sill self-leveling. One last product that we haven't talked about, M1 Clean Room does everything M1 does. It's not quite the tenacious adhesive that M1 does. M1's 390 pounds. This one's in the lower threes, but still outstanding adhesion with M1 Clean Room. The benefit of M1 Clean Room is that it releases virtually no molecular air contamination and contains no isocyanates. So what's that mean to someone that's looking for a clean, type, a clean room type product? It means that it's not putting any type of contaminant in the air. And there's certain applications within places. You're going to see that they have, they don't have pharmaceutical companies down here. The pharmaceutical companies want, when they're manufacturing their products, they want the least amount of air contaminations possible. So they're always looking for products to meet clean room applications. M1 Clean Room meets those applications. Hospitals look for the other big one, computer ma chip manufacturers, companies like Intel, right, and Pentium and the rest of those guys that manufacture computer chips um, cannot have any contaminants in the air. It screws up the chips, right? So M1 Clean Room, they, that company buys a boatload of our product. Um, federal public buildings, data centers, clean rooms, Pharmaceutical companies, mission critical buildings, hospitals have R and D departments in there. Again, not looking for any type of air contamination whatsoever. M1 Clean Room passes that. I know some of you mechanical contractors out there are working in buildings along these lines, and you need a product along this that doesn't have the air contamination. We have that for you if you need it. I mentioned this way earlier, so I'm coming down to the final few slides here. But when you're installing below 40 degrees, I said earlier, M1, M1 clean room, door sill will adhere to frost and will adhere. I don't know if door sill will or not, so I'll take that one back. But the M1 and the M1 clear, clean room will, will stick to frost and will stick to ice. So if there's a sheen of ice on there, we need to get that sheen of ice off. We need to get that frost off. How do we get it off? We use denatured alcohol or 90% or higher isopropylene alcohol. We pour it on a rag. We wipe it on the surface. We get all the ice off with one of these two types of products. Once the ice and frost is removed, then we go back and do all our steps we mentioned earlier. Being wintertime and being cold, there's less moisture in the air, so it takes a little bit longer for it to cure. To take a, a, a curb to cure in August will probably take two to four weeks. Uh, in February, January, February, it'll probably take a solid month to cure from top to bottom. But the minute you're done pouring that pourable sealer in there, that thing is watertight. You can let it rain. It could downpour, and it's not going to leak. So it'll just take a little bit longer for that to cure from top to bottom. So with that, all, so that's. It in terms of cold weather guidelines, we also have the we partner with Albion. They make caulk guns. They make really nice caulk guns. This one here is a B26. It's a 26 to one uh, thrust. So when you squeeze it, it give, it pushes our material out really nice and smooth. If you have a 495 Lowe's or Home Depot special caulk gun, your arm and your your hand are going to hate you by the end of the day. These ones here that are driven this way, the $15 gun that you could buy at one of those home centers, right? That one's a 12 to 1 ratio and works really well. When I forget my gun, I go to one of those stores and buy their $15 gun, and it works fine. So the $15 gun works well. This is a B26. This one's probably 25 to 30 bucks, but 
Both guns work really well. The B12, the B26 from Albion, or any type of gun that you're going to see with this type of handle mechanism is designed to drive thicker materials. So us not having any solvents in our products, we, we are a thicker material.